Fun fact, Raijin was a Japanese god of thunder. Coincidence? Actually, it could be. I'm not entirely sure. Today, we have a unit from Raijin Tech named the Triton 360. This is an all-in-one CPU cooler unit and looks really nice. I'm so far liking some things I've seen. I've actually been eyeing this unit for a while and quite frankly, I was really hoping I'd get a chance to review it. So hey, what do you know? My lucky day. But first, let's go ahead and talk about some features about and kind of explain why I was so excited about this particular unit. Now first, obviously, we have a full 360 millimeter radiator, which is a pretty good size. We are dealing with aluminum here. We're not going to have copper or brass, but it's a good size. It's going to give us a lot of surface area to dissipate the heat. So that's one thing that obviously is pretty exciting. But the other thing that's nice is this is an expandable unit. Now we've seen that happen with a few coolers that have come to market already. But there's a, one thing that really struck me about this unit was the fact that they used fittings on the hoses instead of using typical clamps or quick connects or other things like that. And so with the fittings, it's going to make it a whole lot easier to expand to include things like GPUs or chipsets and to do liquid cooling. So I thought that was a really nice feature. I also really like the fact that there's a fill port right here on the pump head. That makes it a lot easier to access it. I've seen some on the radiator, but it's a lot harder to pull your radiator out of the case than it is to just pop the pump lock off of the, off the chip and be able to do some filling, dyeing, so on and so forth. So there's a couple other features. The other really important feature about this unit, just to, just to quickly summarize some of the things that I'm seeing, is the pump power. This pump is rated at 120 liters per hour, which in the closed loop market, that's that's pretty high. Now I know this isn't a closed loop, but still it's nice to see a pump that has that much power because if we're going to add anything to it, then we need to have plenty of, of flow rate in order to keep all those other components cooled. Finally, just a couple other little details. We have a nice mirror finish on the block, um, just super reflective, very smooth. And we've also got some LED lighting in the pump to help um, just give that little bit of nice aesthetic ambiance in your case, which I always appreciate. It's just a straight white LED, but because of the included dyes with the unit, I can make the, the coolant whatever color I want. And of course, that will reflect in the color. Next, let's talk about the mounting process on this unit. Overall, I really liked it. It was pretty simple, pretty easy. Most units now, they allow you to mount the bracket onto the motherboard first and then you're able to screw down the pump head onto that bracket and that does make things way easier. I'm glad that the days of trying to finagle the pump head and the rear bracket and trying to hold it and then things slip and you smear your thermal paste all over and your thermal paste and you have to redo everything. I'm glad those days are done. And so most units now that I'm seeing they come with an actual bracket that mounts to the motherboard first and then all you have to do is just set the pump down onto the bracket. Now at first I was a little worried. I thought maybe this wouldn't get a very good even coverage because there was only two screws on either side rather than having like a four point connection. But man, this thing went nice and even. Didn't have any issues there. So the install on this unit was really great. I did like it. Instructions could have been a little better. I was being really careful in that and some of those pictures were really small so I was like, uh, the, but it was pretty self-explanatory and it wasn't too hard to figure it out. Now there was one issue though, and this is only an issue that I think AMD users might run into. I don't think this is gonna be an issue that Intel will have. Now because they're using the full square bracket for both Intel and AMD, of course on an Intel socket that's normal. They have the four points that are, that are in a square on their motherboards. But with AMD, they have their four points in more of a rectangle on the top and bottom of their socket. Because of that, some of the components like the VRMs and various things on the motherboard are soldered in closer to the socket. And what I noticed is, is that bracket was coming dangerously close and actually sitting on top of some of the solder points that were on the back of my motherboard. Now, there is a foam bracket on there, and that foam was pretty thick, and I never had any issues with the unit grounding out anything in my motherboard. 
That being said, I was not feeling very comfortable about leaving it on long term. That foam was compressing gradually and there is a risk and it could fry your motherboard. So I wouldn't recommend using it for an AMD system if they don't fix the bracket. But if they redesign the bracket, especially if they use AMD's included backplate, it'll be much better. Um, one of the other things I noticed too in light of that, because of the largeness of the square, I noticed the socket bulging out a little bit in the back. Now with my Asus motherboard, I wouldn't have even tried that because I've had so many socket issues anyway when there's too much pressure. But my ASRock 990FX Extreme 9, that thing's held up great. So overall, I really like their mounting process. Just want to see them revamp that back bracket for AMD sockets or best yet, just use the included one that AMD has on their motherboards. But otherwise, really easy. Didn't have any problems. I did like the mounting system. Let's get to the basics on the performance. Overall, we want to know, hey, does this unit handle heat? Can it cool off the processor? So I went ahead and set an overclock of 4.5 gigahertz on my 8350, running a V-core of about 1.49 volts. The Ryzen Tech Triton 360 was able to average about a 48.9 temperature on the CPU package, which is pretty good, especially considering I'm running a fairly aggressive overclock. Now, I could only at the moment, I had to redo some testing due to an RMA, so I went ahead and redid some just basic tests on the Corsair H110i GTX. Now, at full throttle with the fans going as loud as I can, it was actually managing to keep my processor down to about 44.7 on average. So yes, we're looking at about 4 degrees behind what the Corsair unit can do. But if we look at the decibel ratings, even with three fans, this guy was running about 54. That's kind of high, but it was tolerable, and it wasn't too bad. The Corsair unit on full runs a massive 60 decibels, and it's, it is hard to, to handle. The fans are very growly, if that's such a word, and they're just, it sounds like I'm just shooting a hurricane through that radiator, and it's just uncomfortable. Now, I was able to set the Corsair unit to balanced, and we we're still pulling a 47.2 average, which is still pulling a little bit of a lead on the Rigen Tech unit, but our decibel rating did drop to a more comfortable 51. So yes, the Corsair may be the performance keen in this particular case, but what the Corsair doesn't have is open loop. You can't just open it up, add more, more components to it. Where with the Rigen Tech, you can. Now I have more details at my site, so go ahead and check out pureoverclock.com for the full review so you can see some more comparisons like VRM temps, thermal pace difference, and even the pump decibel ratings. There is one more item I think I should mention about this unit, though, before moving forward. The included thermal paste is something you probably shouldn't use. I noticed a thermal paste differential from my Prolematech PK1. Yeah, say that one five times fast. But I noticed about a five degree difference, which means they're not using a very good grade thermal paste with the included unit. And that can actually hurt your performance pretty bad. So I definitely recommend grabbing a different thermal paste. Now, one other thing. I went ahead and tried to push the processor up to the max that I could go with this unit. I got up to 4.7 gigahertz, and the chip I got isn't a particularly great overclocking chip. I did not get lucky on that one. But I got up to 4.7, and I was able to run my stress test for about two and a half hours before core finally failed, which wasn't bad. When I upped the voltage, I was able to run stable, it looked like, but my temperatures were starting to push too high on the VRMs and the core temps, and I decided to back it down. But I went ahead and threw it at 4.6, really great. I wasn't averaging more than about 55 degrees on my stress test for the core. Temperature stayed great, no throttling. So yeah, 4.6, very easy to do with this unit. And that's running a, a 1.525 V core, which is pretty high. So overall, I'm still impressed with this unit's ability to cool. All right, let's talk about whether or not this unit's worth buying. Now, what we have is an all-in-one unit that on Newegg sells for about $140. That's a little high compared to other closed loop coolers that are on, on, on the site. For instance, right now, you could pick up the Corsair H110i GTX for about $120. So you're paying a little bit more for this unit. And considering that the Corsair seems like it's holding out a little bit of a performance edge, 
it's kind of like, well, should I do it? But there's a couple of things that are nice about this unit. First off, obviously the closed loop, hence the name, once that unit starts degrading and if that coolant starts going downhill, you're not going to open it up, you're not going to switch out the, the coolant, you're not going to be able to refurbish it and get it going again. It's going to die and when it does, it's over and you're buying a new unit. Where here, if your coolant starts going bad, you can open it up, clean it out, put some fresh stuff in, keep the unit going. So that's pretty nice. But here's a big issue. If you're thinking, hey, I want to get into custom loop cooling, but I'm not sure I want to spend all that money yet. And right now I just want to put my CPU under liquid. I'm not sure about anything yet, maybe down the road. Then this is going to offer you some really good options because, hey, you can just throw it on your processor. You're going to get some pretty nice cooling performance out of it. You've got a pretty powerful pump as far as any other all-in-one closed loop units are concerned. And so if you want to, say, cool your processor now, and then maybe in six months to a year, you're like, you know what, I'm going to add a GPU block to it. This guy's going to give you that option without having to start all over again, getting a whole new unit. So while the price is a little bit high, it's not too bad, and it's something that if it's going to serve the purpose that you want, it's going to be perfect for that. You do have some nice fans on this thing. They're not incredibly loud. They're very easy to control with a fan controller or a fan hub. And so that works out pretty well. There's a couple of things I would have liked to have seen that would have really increased the value. For instance, an included fan hub. It'd make it a lot easier to manage these fans. Now, of course, my Noctis case that I reviewed this in already includes one of those. So I didn't have to worry about it in this particular case. But sometimes you don't have that in your computer chassis so it'd be nice if they included just a small fan hub to be able to control these three fans off of one CPU fan header. Outside of that, I love the fact that it's open loop. I love the fact that they're using fittings. I think they've got a lot of good things. Obviously, the AMD bracket thing is something that we want to see changed a little bit. But overall, it's a pretty solid unit. So I'm going to go ahead and award the Ryzen Tech Triton 360 the Pure Overclock's Great Hardware Award. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I try to keep it pretty short and concise. If you want full details, I'm going to have a full written review up on Pure Overclock. So go ahead, I'll have the link below in the description. Check it out, it'll give you way more details so that way if you're looking for some things that I didn't answer in this video, you'll hopefully be able to find it on the site. But for here, I just wanted to keep it pretty short and give you a general overview just kind of give you the, some of the big answers that you might be looking for. But if there's some things that you think I want you, that you think I should cover in better detail, or hey, if you think that there's just, you know, these things should be a little longer, or if you think they need to be a little shorter, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you have questions about the unit, ask me in the comments below. I check them out. I'd love to answer your questions on it to the best of my ability. So once again, I'll have a review up in the description. Check that out if you want some more details. And then definitely check out pureoverclock.com. We've got great community over there, really helpful, bringing up constant news and reviews. So if you want to keep up to date on what's going on in the industry, check them out. And then finally, if you like what I'm doing, hey, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to keep bringing out more reviews, and there's more in the pipes that are coming along the way. So, hey, check it out. If you like it, subscribe. Check out Pure Overclock, and I will catch you next time. Well, thanks again for watching. I need to throw out a couple of good thank yous here for this review. First, definitely want to thank NZXT for providing me the case. This is a review sample I got a little bit ago, but this thing's been an excellent case. I've really enjoyed using it, doing, been doing all my cooling reviews inside the case, and so really do appreciate it. I also want to send out a huge thank you to ASRock. Now, the Extreme 9 motherboard is one that I bought. But I had a temperature sensor on the VRM or CP back to the CPU socket that had gotten burned out through a bracket on another review. And honestly, their RMA process was great. Their service was great. They gave me a really great board that's, you know, just it's been holding up excellently, doing really good for my for my reviews. So big thanks to ASRock for just being able to having great service, helping me out there, not even for the review purposes, just just because I was a customer. 
And then finally, I definitely want to send out a huge thank you to Raijin Tech for providing me the re review sample. This, this unit has been a lot of fun to play with. I really enjoy doing this anyway, but I'm really happy that they asked us to do a review for them. So, hey, really enjoyed it. Big thanks to Raijin Tech again. And honestly, just thank you to everybody who made this review possible.